All right, hello everyone, this is Chara, and welcome to the very last episode of the Weapon Class Discussion. Today we're going to be talking about the support shooters, which are the Junior, Aerosprays, and Zaps, and the 96 Gals. And joining to me, and joining me today, will be Tic Tac and Bursty. Um, hi, I'm Tic Tac. Um, I'm a top level support player. I've been playing support for a couple years by now i think um i haven't really been on any team but i've always been probably top four top eight in tournaments uh nice to meet you all right and bursty hello i'm bursty i play for ftun in case you don't know kind of okay team <laughs> uh i play support for them so i used to play h3 now i just play zap and junior and uh i've won a few tournaments so uh, tassel and he opened a couple in the zones. Yeah. And like six NA championships, you know? <laughs> yeah, or just, won a few a of the couple. NA championships, yeah. Just a few of them. All right, so we're going to be going over the weapon classes, and we're going to be starting with Junior, which is a bit of a controversial weapon, but I guess we'll go with that. And uh, Bursty, just can I get your thoughts on like the main weapon of Junior? How good is it right now? Uh, I think it's pretty good. Uh, in terms of viability, if we're talking support shooters, it's definitely up there. Uh, obviously, the main drawback of Junior is just it's not the greatest at fighting due to its poor range, poor damage, and abysmal RNG. Uh, the thing is, a support shooter, you don't really have to fight. Uh, it's super mobile, and it gives a lot of uh, assets to the team, like bomb spam, armor. It's super inconfident. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever you have it on your team, you like, the map is almost perma-painted, you're getting like 10 plus armors a game, it's pretty insane as a weapon. Alright, that sounds good. Okay, Tic Tac, do you have anything you want to add to that? Or do you kind of disagree with what Percy was saying? Yeah, it's pretty spot on, like, the thing about Junior is uh, the increased ink tank is basically for the slap bombs, so you make up for the fact that you can't contribute to team fights just by spamming bombs to get chip damage or a random lucky kill here and there. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you just want to run around like a cockroach, paint the map, and get special. <laughs> yeah, seems to work pretty well, so I mean, hit-wise, I think we'll start with the vanilla junior just to go over it. So I mean, you mentioned that the bigger ink tank is really good for splat bomb armor, so is this like a perfect kit for it, or do you think it's a little bit lack- like, is there something lacking with it, or is this the best junior could have ever hoped for? Um, I feel like- uh, Splat Bomb armor is honestly really good because the Splat Bomb, you know, detonates a lot faster. It's really easy to uh, get accidental kills or uh, just throw it at your teammate who's fighting to get some chip damage in. Um, potentially, I feel like Suction armor could also be good just because Suction is so good at painting for your special. That way, uh, Junior could just uh, probably spam like 12 armors a game. But I feel the way it is, uh, the hypermobility really suits the armor and the suction bomb. Okay. Or not suction, spot bomb. Alright, I'll ask this to Bursty, because the basic plus two, plus three debate right now has just been like, is Junior completely outclassed by NZAP right now? Obviously the current meta is pretty fight heavy in terms of like having weapons that are good at combat with all the splashes in 52. So do you think Junior is completely outclassed by Zap, or... Are there places where Junior should still be used? Uh, I think it depends on the context. Like, if you're talking like plus two, plus three, a lot of these guys just play pickups. And if you're in a pickup scenario, you can pick Junior or Zap. Either is fine. Uh, but I think if you're crafting an optimal comp, Zap is almost always better because uh, Junior is really only good in a comp when there are multiple weapons on your team that lack paint. Like thing like a classic f2 in comp like junior machine not like machine and not very much don't paint so they need a junior to kind of overpaint for them um but this is kind of bad because like in actual play if the junior dies uh your team is going to lose a lot of map control right so instead a better crafted comp would be something where zap is good where you can have weapons that can fight but also paint a little bit like 52 and splash so that when any event that your support dies, um, you're still, still able to contest map control. And uh, I mean, Zap is also just good at better at fighting for itself. So it's less likely to die uh, to an extent. Mm -hmm. So I guess you'd say like, 
It's better to have comps that fit Zap instead of Junior, because Zap is overall better, but there's some comps where Junior fits it a bit better. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. All right. Okay, then. Well, now it gets to be the weird part where I get to talk about the other kits, so... All right, let's... What about Custom Junior? How good is that one? <laughs> uh, there was only one point in my four years of playing this game where I ever considered playing it. It was a... Uh... A couple of years ago when Booyah spam Rain on... Meta. Yeah. No, no, no. It was the Booyah spam meta on Humpback. Some people would run... Or it was like theory crafted that you could run Rain Jr. and like paint over the Booyahs. But I didn't find it very... Uh, very replicable in like actual games. So I just never ended up using it. Mm -hmm. you, did, like... you did try it for a bit though. Yeah, I tried it in screens. Big mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like, uh, what's my call it? It's a counter Booyah meta. You just want to spam your own Booyah, mm -hmm. you know? Like, uh, Rain maybe had a place when Rain was really good, like, three, four years ago. Like, double Rain meta was a thing, but... I honestly feel like the, uh, Armor Junior, and due to how, like, Armor is just the meta thing, like, it's really hard to find a competitive comp without Armor now. Mm -hmm. The Armor Junior just ends up winning over, like, uh everything else honestly yeah so the rain spam just isn't really as necessary it doesn't really help too much compared to where armor is like a thing you actually want all the time yeah <laughs> all right well that's sad fate of custom junior and then we have the kensa junior which is kind of a bit different since it's more of an i guess aggressive kit with the bubble combo so i mean unlike the kensa unlike the custom junior it's not really built too much around special spamming do you think that has a bit of a place. I know there were some players in Japan who used it for a while, but has it kind of not really fit into a use anymore, or is it still, like, kind of okay? Honestly, it's hard to say, because Custom Junior, not Custom, Kensa Junior is in that weird position of it's a support, as in it can paint a lot, and it also fills a role of aggression due to the uh, frequency it gets the uh, bubbles. But at the same time, it's... Uh, what do you call it? Like, you, you need a separate armor player if you want to run that. And then it becomes, what do you want? Do you want a zap or do you want a another junior? And then your comp has the issue of if you have a junior zap, then you're like extremely paint dependent and lack a bit of aggression. I feel like it could have a niche in like a certain tent comps or maybe brush or other two high, high mobility frontline comps where you just try to create chaos at mid so that you can special spam your bubbles into mid. but. I feel like uh, the niche is definitely smaller compared to the Armor Junior. Mm -hmm. Bruce, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, no, I agree. It's kind of like, I mean, I guess we're going to talk about the, like, Grey's up for Swarm Zap. Mm -hmm. uh, Kensa Junior is more like a, of an offensive option and obviously it doesn't have the armor, so it's, it has kind of has to rely on its bubbles and its torp to actually do anything. Uh, I don't think it's completely useless but as tiktok said like if you're running a junior uh a kensa junior in your comp then you're gonna need an additional armor support on top of that so you're really gonna need a lot of uh fighting potential with your other two weapons yeah that definitely makes sense so i mean all right with all things considered just to go over back to junior as a whole do you guys think the weapon is kind of too focused around bomb and special spam or do you think that's okay like do you think the weapon in its current state isn't like, should it be more focused around the main weapon itself? Is it too much of a special spammer? Or is it okay to have a weapon like that in competitive? Or um, should a weapon have to be more no. main weapon orientated like NZAP is? Well, I feel like it's more so on the meta at that point, because it's. I feel like Splatoon 2 is a game that's revolved around specials. And then um, even if you play Zap, although you can use a main weapon a lot, it's usually focused around your armor's sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I want to also hear like uh, Bercy's opinion on it, but well, uh, I personally think it's terrible design and shouldn't be in the game. Just from like playing Junior optimally, you literally you don't die. You just spam paint, spam bombs, spam armor. You don't interact with opponents, and it's I don't really think it's how the developers really envisioned the game to be played. I hope um, not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. As TikTok said, like even if you play ends up, you still like have that play style, but it just super augmented with junior since it's so bad at fighting um 
So yeah, I, I just think it's terrible design. I don't think they should make a, a gun that just can't fight and can only spam special. Alright, so yeah, definitely something that shouldn't be super good. Well, I guess next we have a weapon that's very similar to Junior, but doesn't really see as much use, or I say that, but it did see use in Reptide recently, but I mean, Arrow Spray is very, very much similar to Junior. It's another bad fighting spray shooter, but it's a little bit different. So, I mean, main weapon-wise, like, without the kits involved at all, how does Arrow Spray hold up to Junior? Like, is it a good bit worse, or is it more or less the same thing, if you want to start Tic Tac? Um, so remember how he said that Junior was niche and that it fills a very specific paint role? Mm -hmm. Well, Aerospray is that, but even more niche. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, it spams specials that isn't armor. So specials that aren't like the meta special, if that makes sense. So it's that makes it even more niche, if that makes sense. Like it's niche to the niche. It's like an extreme situation on certain map uh, mode combos that you're like, all right, uh, Booyah Bomb spam is really good here. Let's just run it, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. Other than that, it doesn't really provide a supportive role in its special or sub. It's more of a, uh, whatchamacallit, chip damage provider and also turf provider. Mm -hmm. But um, I honestly just think it's a turf war weapon for a lot of casual people. Yeah. All right, well, Bursty, would you say the main weapon itself is, like, worse or better than Junior? Because it does have more jump spread, and it is a five-shot kill. Like, does that really hurt it? Uh, to be honest, I haven't played much Aerospray, but from the small bit I have, it feels much worse. Like, I don't know. Like, I haven't really played much, but I think it's more inaccurate, and, like, the five-shot feels even worse. Like, getting four shots with Junior when you have terrible RNG is really bad. And having to get five with air spray just feels even worse so yeah i mean they're both pretty bad at fighting so like on the grand scheme of things it's not really that bad but yeah compared to junior it definitely feels a bit worse all right well i guess to start with the air spray kits obviously we have the pg that we'll get to later but we've seen a lot more silver air spray specifically pika made a video talking about its use in rainmaker with the 160 curling rush and suction bomb and then in the Riptide Grand Finals, we had not FT win, uh, pick up FT win players and Starburst playing each other and Ant actually brought it out for Rainmaker Humpback. So I guess just Silver Aerospray has one of the fastest specials in the game and Curling Rush is definitely a unique special. It's only on it and Tent. So do you think Silver Aerospray is starting to get a niche in Rainmaker? Is that something that you think we'll see more of if either of you want to take this? Okay, um, I could see it having a potential niche in Rainmaker, but um, even then, the niche it serves would be Suction is always good on Rainmaker, because on defense you usually end up spamming Suction. So uh, it's okay on defense, although it can't contribute much with its main. Mm -hmm. um, the special being Bomb Rush uh, allows you to get instant pop, and the fact that it can get it so quickly is also really good. But it runs into the same issue of that we said earlier of the, uh, what should we call it, Kensa Jr. of um, you're spamming a special that isn't armor, so you end up wanting a armor player. Mm -hmm. And the other armor options are usually very turf dependent. And then uh, if you have an air spray and also a zap, for instance, or something like that, um, you just kind of lack the aggressiveness that you want in Raymaker. Especially because if you watch competitive air sprays play, they never fight with their main weapon. It's usually just uh, sub spam. Mm -hmm. um, just because of how bad it is at killing, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's something that can definitely work. Its kit's very strong in it, but the main weapon still really struggles in that mode since it can't yeah. really reliably kill. All right. You'd have to, yeah. You'd have to shape an entire your entire team would have to uh, work with your weapon. So you'd have to ask your backline, your front line, your support, or your your other people to just be like, hey, I want to run this. I think this will work. Please run this for me. Yeah, that place seems something you have to mold your comp around. Burst, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, I definitely agree. Like, it can kind of put up more of a wall compared to other support shooters. Like, Trailing Rush is impossible to push into, and having nothing to do but spam suctions means you're going to bomb more as, a, as compared to something like Zap, which may want to use its main weapon more. Mm -hmm. specifically, specifically in Rainmaker, sometimes you have to use your main weapon. Like, the your entire team is dead and you're the only one to stop it like air spray is just not the weapon to have for that or 
uh, if you're pushing and one of your teammates had to pick up the Rainmaker due to some circumstance, then you're really, really bad at trying to create space, even with Curling Rush, uh, if there's any like verticality to the map. So yeah, it's not terrible in Rainmaker, but uh, I definitely personally wouldn't use it. All right, interesting to see. Uh, I guess we have the gold arrow spray next, which is the sprinkler baller. I pretty much only see this thing in turf war, so I'm pretty sure TikTok's gonna agree with me here, but it's just something you yeah. see in turf war, right? Uh, it's something you saw for the two weeks that baller was broken <laughs> and also on turf war. Well, yeah, there you go, gold arrow spray, not much to say about it. And then we have the arrow spray PG, the burst bomb, booyah bomb, which is the main one we've been seeing a bit on humpback and a bit in general, so. TikTok, how's that one? Like, is that a solid arrow spray now? Is it like, it has its niches or is 52 it, just a better Booyah weapon now? It has a very specific niche, but yeah, I feel like 52 just outclasses it due to how uh, 52 can just paint. 52 basically does everything now. I feel like it's gonna get nerfed soon. So once the 52 does get nerfed, uh, it might have a niche again, but it's basically um, Booyah spam. That's literally it. On, on maps where you can like uh, booyah the zone for free and like uh, stall a cap or get a cap, it's like maybe decent. Um, but it's basically spams uh, burst bombs to get chip damage for your team and then spam booyah on zone. That's all you do. It's a it's a very uh, mm, weird weapon, I'd say, in the meta. Yeah, definitely a weird option. Uh, I do think 52 rising up and kind of just took away the niche now because 52 just paints so unbelievably well for being a weapon that's mostly supposed to be focused on killing, I guess, but I guess that yeah. just is the way it is. Uh, so, I mean, that's Aerospray's not too much to say about them. They're very similar to Junior, very odd kits, but at least seeing a little bit of use is something good to see. And um, now we get to the main weapon we've been seeing running that has been dominating the support meta for all modes, basically been the most used weapon for what, over a year now, I think? Zap has pretty much not gone toned down. Honestly, two, three years. Two, three, like, Zap has probably been the most dominant support for Splatoon's entire lifespan being meta multiple times, and especially towards the end of the game. So, my question to you guys is, what makes NZap so much better than all the other supports? Well, for starters, the support, like, actual viable weapon pool to choose from is pretty shallow. Like, there's Zap, there's Junior, there's maybe 96 on certain maps, maybe H3D on certain maps. So like, I wouldn't say it's much, much, much better than Junior. I just think it's much more consistent than Junior. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's like, it it's way better at fighting. Um, so you actually have like, good accuracy, good range, good strafe speed. Uh, and the time to kill isn't terrible. So you're able to defend yourself and push and make space, whereas with something like Junior, that you can't do that. Um, even if you get lucky, like, it's just not replic replicatable. Um, and even though you have a higher armor count and worse paint, if you're playing Zap properly and trying to stay alive, you're still gonna be able to pump out like a lot of armors, especially since it has suction. And as Tic said earlier, suction paints better than spot bomb uh, so you're gonna get more special points just from that and yeah also because you're able to fight you're able to play in more more modes so even when junior was pretty dominant in the meta we saw people playing zap and tower and clam and sometimes rain as well and that's just because uh in zones you're able to sit back a lot of the time have a passive play style but in the other modes Sometimes you have to create space, even as support, and that's why Zap has always had a pretty strong place in those modes. Mm. So Zap overall just has way more tools at its disposal. It's much more adaptable than the other supports, you think? Mm -hmm. All right. I guess another interesting question about Zap, because one of Zap's main things as a main weapon is it's actually kind of ink hungry, and even suction is kind of ink hungry. And the main thing that's kind of counteracted this and allowed Zap to be really good in that department anyway has been last ditch effort so would you say last ditch effort is a big part of what makes zap good since it really helps with its ink efficiency and its bomb spam or is it not as drastic a reason as to why it's good right now 
Um, I'd say last ditch is ran just because of how ridiculous it is on certain game modes. Um, just in general, especially on zones, last ditch is a honestly must have even on non support weapons. Uh, I feel like zap is also definitely good without last ditch, and it's not broken because of last ditch, but last ditch just makes it that much more um, extreme. Great extreme, I guess, yeah. Because, uh, to be honest, the zap doesn't paint phenomenally well. It just, it's not like an extremely good painter. It's just that it can do everything okay. And because it can do everything okay, and it also has a kit meant for support, um, it just ends up being able to do a lot of other stuff that other supports struggle with by itself, if need be, if that makes sense. Yeah, that definitely makes uh, a lot of sense. Yeah, because uh, Splatoon isn't necessarily a class shooter. Uh, it has different weapons that are good at doing different things for your team. But because it's not a specifically class shooter, um, there's going to be situations where the front line is going to need to get kills. Or, I mean, the support is going to need to get kills. The support is going to need to do other stuff. It happens a lot more prominently on other game modes. Mm -hmm. um, because your front line is just more prone to dying. So you need to fill in that role. But just given that, um, that's why the zap is just the best on um, a lot of those other modes just because it can do everything else that much more okay compared to uh, the junior which you know cannot get a kill in 99% of the situations it's in uh, it's also kind of this is irrelevant but uh, it's also kind of why uh, the K gal 52 gal is also considered broken right now because despite it being like a slay centered weapon it can paint it can also survive with its wall and that's why everybody especially Japan is very frustrated because it is the weapon to do everything. Yeah, so definitely. Yeah, that's interesting parallel with what you do, like 52 and Zap. Like, even if they don't do anything particularly well, they kind of just do a lot. That's very interesting. We talked about 85 a bit, but it is not the only Zap to see some usage. And we've especially recently seen a lot more of the NZAP 89 with the auto bomb and the Tena Missile Kit. So, I guess, what do you guys think of that? Is that still another nice option, or is it not that good? I think it's seen more play more so just because of how one, how good missiles are. Like if armor wasn't in the game then missiles would just be the special everyone would spam. And also because of the poor selection you have for missile weapons, like uh CDS has kinda of fallen out of meta, K shots fallen out of meta. Just because they're not really able to keep up with these like fifty twos and splashes. Um, so you're seeing more eighty nine just because it's still a zap, so it's still able to run around, have decent kill pressure, have pretty decent paint and survivability with its lightweight swim speed, uh, and you're also just able to spam missiles. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I, I don't. I don't really think there's anything particular about like, 89, like why it got good. I think people just started running it because it originally used to be a joke, but like solo key players playing it, so no comp players really tried it. But then once it kind of caught around. People realized how strong it is. If you were like, oh, it's still an NZAP and it has missiles, <laughs> it's still pretty good, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, I mean, I think 89 is pretty interesting. I mean, do you, it does get a lot more specials than 85, I think, since missiles are something that you can farm just really easily after usage and it is a bit cheaper points for specials. So, I mean, it, it definitely seems to fit some uses. Tic Tac, do you agree? Like, is 89 kind of has its uses right now? Uh, yeah, I feel like it's just that the competitive scene realized that missiles are actually pretty good. So, uh, the end zap has missiles, and it's a decent option. So, they're like, hey, you know what, let's go with it. Um, yeah, I feel like uh, the sub, the autobomb, isn't the best, but it's serviceable because it can paint for you. Um, if the missile end zap had suction or splat bombs, uh, I'd be honestly afraid because it'd be running over the meta right now. Yeah, but so it's yeah. the Autobomb that really holds it back. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. It's right. like, uh, if you look at the other options, like Vanilla H3, it's point sensor, which is terrible. So if you look at the good miss options, it's very limited. Yeah, that's definitely really true. All right, then, and we have one more zap, which is the weird one, the Sprinkler 170 rain. I'm getting a feeling this is going to be very similar to the, to the Custom Junior, to where it just rain spam isn't really something that anyone wants right now. Am I correct on that, or is there something else? You are correct on that, and there's also the fact that, uh, let's just say you missile, uh, the moment you use that missile, you can charge your special uh, again. 
But the issue with rain is once you use the rain, there's like a seven second duration that you can't charge for your next special. So it's not really that good of a special to spam per se, because you can't really have it continuously charging, if that makes sense. Like yeah. you're forced to wait, there's a cooldown between the time that you can charge your special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that definitely really hurts its special output in the long run. Yeah. All right, then, I guess last question in terms of the zaps as a whole, which is Nintendo has pretty much not touched this weapon whatsoever. It hasn't even touched the specials involved, the subs, nothing. Do you think Zap actually should be nerfed? I don't think so. Like, like we were talking about Junior before and how, like, it's just bad game design. I think Zap is good game design. Uh, it's... If Zap wasn't as good as... as good as it is right now, then we wouldn't have these cool, like, not machine give to these weapons that, like, need support. Like, you kind of need a weapon that's strong in the support role to enable the other weapons in the meta. And if Zap wasn't there, then everyone would just be playing Junior, and obviously that would be much worse. So, so, I think, like, obviously it's a really strong weapon, and it's been on the top of the, top of the meta for a really long time. But I think that's just more so because other weapons are weaker. Like, I think the design should be, like, make things more like Zap and less so make Zap less like Zap. So kind of, like, make more of the support weapons better at doing specific things or just make them more well-rounded, less focused on special output, and then things will work out fine. And Zap also kind of enables a lot of the good things in the meta right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so. I'd, I'd say mostly agree with that. Also, I also... A more of a buff instead of nerf kind of person. Um, you can see a lot in fighting games too, but um, the one thing that I would just like to mention here is I do not understand why this they decided to nerf the H3 um, <laughs> couple oh, patches. I, I'm sorry, I just had to get that off myself. Like um, They decided to nerf the H3 in extremely niche that is only viable on probably zones unless you decide to one trick it. Uh, I don't know who to do that, but um, it's definitely, I want to see the other weapons get buffed more um, to be on a zap level. For instance, like the 96 or uh, H3 again. Uh, like uh, 96 could have more turf output or more survivability. H3 could have more mobility and that would just make it so that instead of the zap being the only support weapon that can actually uh, contribute in other aspects mm -hmm. instead of armor spam, uh, you'd also have these other options. If that makes sense. Definitely pretty interesting. All right. Well, thank you for the input on that. And speaking of 96, it is the last weapon we have to talk about today. So vanilla 96 sees some use on long range maps, but it's definitely one of the weirder support options. So I mean, Tic Tac, I've seen you play it quite a bit. So what are your thoughts on it? Um, I don't know if I played it quite a bit, but 96 is a weird niche. Um... I'd say the only times I do run it, uh, there's have to be a couple conditions. Uh, one is that it's a map that favors long range weapons. Um, just due to how 96 needs to rely on its range. Uh, it doesn't have a sub, well it doesn't have the sprinkler, but the, that, that doesn't help at all with spacing or uh, fighting. Uh, so you need to rely on main weapon. And there's also RNG in it, so uh, you need to guarantee yourself certain distance between you and the opponent to make sure that two shots connect before they can reach you. And uh, just due to how bad the 96 is right now, like uh, sometimes you need to rely on one shot. That's why I like to run main power on it, uh, to make it 70 damage so that I can combo with uh, splat bombs, burst bombs, and uh, other weapons on my team. Mm -hmm. So it's a niche that is a unique niche in that uh, you need to utilize range and a lot of team comboing to make it actually work, I feel. Um, but yeah, that's about it. All right, Bursty, anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, so whenever you're playing a support weapon, it feels really bad when it's a mobile. Like, that's why I stopped playing H3. Uh, like, if you're playing support for your team, one of your roles is to not die and, uh, 96 is really immobile, like, it's not light, like, it's not lightweight, like Junior and Zap, uh, and while you're shooting, it's straight speed is actually abysmal, so you can get caught really easily, uh, and it's slow, so it's hard to paint your, paint your feet and swim away, 
but just due to the mobility alone, I don't really like playing it. Uh, then when you factor in like the RNG, the high ink consumption, and uh, the slow-ish fire rate, it doesn't really feel that great to play. Alright, so actually probably a bit worse than I was expecting you guys to talk about it. Alright, that's pretty interesting. Um, I would say that 96 definitely benefits from having something to help it survive, but I guess we can get to that. So, I guess to go over kits real quick, we can talk about the vanilla 96. And I mean, the main thing I'm going to ask you guys is, because I've seen a bunch of 96 players say they like the sprinkler, but to me, I see a lack of lethal bomb as another major downside. So, what do you guys think of sprinkler on 96? Like, is it a big problem that it's a support without an armor? I mean, uh, without a bomb? Or is it not as big a deal for it? It's a huge problem. Because, uh, let's say with a support, uh, you need to gain turf. Uh, you have your really slow main weapon that is also very RNG dependent, and uh, and you don't have a sub. Uh, you have a sprinkler, but that's just paints. Um, so you can't really gain turf with it. Uh, the thing that Nysus can do is basically retreat and uh, paint an area and stall an engagement until uh, it gets the two shots, if that makes sense. Um, so it's not good at pushing up. Um, what would help it is honestly burst bomb. I feel if you can just have the main power up damage. So if you could do one burst bomb, one shots kill, I feel like that would make 96 really good. Uh, but the fact that it doesn't it has slow mobility, it struggles with surviving. Like in order for the 96 to survive, you need to have a lot of space behind you that you can retreat to. It's not really good at holding a certain position. If that makes sense. Yeah, so a bomb would really help with poking and mobility, which is something it already kind of struggles with. Yeah. So I guess to kind of wrap up the V96 kit then, would you say the main weapon isn't really built to be that great a support? Or does it really just need a sub or some kind of buff to enable it to be a good support? Uh, I'd say probably not designed to be support. It's really slow and clunky, and also, even if it did have a bomb, it really wouldn't be able to make that much good use of it. It's kind of like if, uh, like with Kensa Splattershot Pro, how it has Splat Bomb. It's really ink, the, the main weapon is really ink hungry, so you're not really able to bomb all that much. And it'd basically be the same thing with 96. Uh, so I, I definitely think it fits more of like a, a crossfire role. Unfortunately, it didn't really get that many good kits, so it's not really played that much, but uh, definitely not a support weapon. Or at least not built to be one. All right. Uh, and then we have the 96 Deco, which is pretty interesting because it has a wall. And I think wall kind of helps with a lot of the main problems that you described with it, mainly its lack of survivability. So, I mean, it still doesn't have mobility, but a wall gives it a way to kind of stay alive. I could actually see that being really good with its armor kit. But, of course, the 96 Deco was, of course, cursed to have Splashdown. But I, I guess in terms of kit, like, do you think the wall is still something that really helps it? Obviously, it was on the... 96 and Splatoon 1, so I mean, it, is Wall a great sub for it and it really just got hurt by Splashdown, or is it still plagued with other problems? I feel like Wall definitely does help it. It does solve a lot of the issues I have of, like, uh, pushing up, but then again, it would serve a niche of, like, uh, flat maps such as Port or Erewhon and Mall. Uh, the Walls would just let it push, you know, corners instantly for free, and they can use your range of space on those maps, but... Um, it's just unfortunate that it has Splashdown, honestly. It's kind of like the Hydra that has Splashdown. It's... <laughs> it, it can't do anything with it's special. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, like, Wald's definitely good. If it had a decent special, um, it could have been a niche, uh, not meta, but definitely could have worked on certain maps. Alright. And, I... Any other changes that you'd want to see to 96, I guess? Like, do you think there's anything that should be changed with 96, or... Is the main weapon itself fine? Um, um, I mean, I can't really think of ways of balancing it that wouldn't, like, just make it really broken. Like, if you give it survivability and mobility, then she becomes, like, an insanely strong crossfire weapon. Um, and if you're nerfing, like, or if you're buffing, like, the RNG slightly, I guess, like, making it play better would be nice, but I don't really know if there's a way to, like, make a really strong midline weapon, a strong support without making it like super busted and overtuned. Yeah, it definitely seems like a hard weapon to balance. 
All right, though. Yeah. So I guess to wrap this up, we've talked about support shooters quite a lot, and the main stigma the weapon class has, and it's something I talked about in my own video on supports a few months back, is a lot of people see support class as really, really boring, and a lot of people never give it a shot because of that. So as players who have played supports for as long as you guys have, is the class boring? Is it less fun than everything else? Um, support is... It's interesting. I feel like a, a lot of uh, what makes it fun comes from uh, game sense and understanding, and also a lot of timings and a lot of aspects that aren't necessarily you see an enemy on screen, you shoot at them, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. The thing about support is the good support players will stay alive. Um, it's not about getting the kills, it's not about making plays, it's about knowing what you can do to help your team and being the most consistent at it as you can. Um, that's why, you know, the good support players focus on uh, using specials when it's needed, spacing and painting zone when they can. But um, a lot of people tend to see that as boring due to how a lot of it's not very adrenaline based, you know, shooting at each other, shooting at an enemy. It's a lot more uh, spacing at an enemy, stalling engagement so your teammates can come, painting the zone. It's a lot more objective centered. I feel like the only game mode where I actually hate support is probably Rainmaker, just due to how you just become the Rainmaker carrier, and there's not much to it, if that makes sense. Yeah, but, you're essentially uh, on target. <laughs> yeah. One thing I will note, though, is that I kind of don't like how as the meta progress support it just kind of dwindled down into a armor spam. Whereas, uh, such as, like, uh, two years ago, uh, the H3 meta, the H3 could actually do... Uh, a lot of stuff by itself. It could kill, it could paint, it could... It was honestly kind of ridiculous at doing everything. But right now, a lot of support is just armor spam, so... I don't like how it's kind of turned into the entire special base. Kind of like what Bursa said of bad game design of just a weapon centered around just spamming your special. Mm -hmm. But is it boring? No. It's fun once you understand of like hey, if I paint this for my team, it'll help them here. Or, hey, this is what's going to help my team win this next engagement. Mm -hmm. So it's not a lot of, you know, I got one, I got two, but it's more so of a, hey, it's better if I play passive here. Hey, it's better if I, I don't engage this. It's better if I just stall out this engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, it's better if I don't dedicate here. Um, so I feel like a lot of what you can appreciate from playing support isn't apparent from a spectator's perspective but more so a uh, management of like, this is beneficial, this isn't, and understanding what makes it work. Gotcha. All right, Bursty, anything you want to add to that or do you just agree there? Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Uh, like support isn't, doesn't really feel super rewarding at times if you're just looking like strictly at like kills and uh, how much you're participating in the match. Like I will say like, playing tower and rain is pretty boring at times you're kind of just sitting on the objective but if you're playing support properly and you're enabling your team it feels very rewarding you kind of have like a a bigger perspective on what you're doing for the game it feels a lot more fun and yeah i think it being boring is more due to the game design and like the objectives like obviously tower and rain are really boring and uh, support didn't always used to be just armor spam and all that. Uh, that's more just the direction the game has gone, which is unfortunate. Like, I wish there was more um, diversity with support weapons. Uh, but yeah, I definitely do enjoy support, and contrary to popular belief, it's pretty fun. All right. Well, I guess one thing that I actually just thought to bring up right now, so. I did a video a bit back as well where I talked about how Kenza Undercover kind of rewards people selfishly for being a support, because whenever you get an assist, you get your shield back, and Kunder's Kit is obviously built around enabling your team to get kills with the armor and the torpedo. So, in terms of how they design supports, would you like to see that kind of direction more, where the, ga where the weapons that are support kind of reward you for helping your team as a means to kind of teach people like, hey, if you help your team, it's positive for you. Do you think support kind of needs to tell people, like, how to play the role, I guess? I know it's a bit of a complicated question. 
Um, that is a hard to answer question. Um, I feel like Splatoon 2 already made a good uh, thing with that by adding assists to the game compared to Splatoon 1 where it was just literally your death and kills. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that assists is influenced by armor, which is also global, is kind of also detracts from that entire argument though. But I feel like it's ultimately, if you go into the high competitive plays, it's all about decision making and you can't really ever simplify that into a simple result screen or an in-game mechanic. I feel like it's always ends up being VOD reviewing, looking at, from the uh, map, seeing what was the right decision to make there. But I feel like it definitely could help by maybe, I don't know, it's, it's very hard. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I want to see what Bursi says on this. Yeah, I don't know. Like, an example of Kunder, like, the weapon engages in a fight with its teammate and then its shield regenerates, right? But, like, yes. in terms of implementing that for support shooters, I don't really know what that would look like. Like, if your teammate uses your turf or something, then you get assists. I don't know. I, I don't really know how it, it would be implemented. I think it is good design to reward uh, support weapons for playing around their team more and uh, like maybe that would if there's a mechanic where like you're helping more in fights you get some resource then maybe the support role wouldn't be so passive and so selfish with their life um, but yeah uh, I think it would be interesting to see implemented I just don't know how they would do it uh, yeah, I love the way that you said that, like, uh, making it to supports have to be more active by helping them. So yeah, that's super well said. So I guess just to wrap up, is there anything either of you guys want to say about support or any of the shooters that we talked about as a whole? Just any kind of final thoughts? Um, support is fun. Um, it's definitely a unique niche. Um, a lot of the times it's all about staying alive, which is why a lot of people don't really, you know, see what's good about it. But uh, I'd say I feel like, I don't know, I feel like support is a product of how Splatoon 2 uh, changed into a, whatchamacallit, special based game. Whereas Splatoon 1, it was all about QR, quick respawn, fast engagements at mid. I wonder what'll happen with Splatoon 3, um, because uh, it really depends on how they approach it. It seems like they're valuing, valuing specials a lot now, but maybe Splatoon 3 there won't be any more supports and it'll be another Splatoon 1 scenario where it's all about engagements and just uh, fighting it out at mid, but who knows. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Can I ask if you would prefer that? Um, I do like the idea of, you know, different roles on different teams. Uh, but I also like how Splatoon, um, every role can do kind of everything, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. There are some extreme cases like the Aerospring Junior, which can't really do other stuff. But, you know, your uh, Tangent Tech can also paint the map. It can also somewhat play as a support sometimes. So uh, I kind of want a nice balance between the two. Like, perhaps making specials not as huge. Like, uh, you know, I feel like if specials were balanced more like either Burst Bomb Rush, where it's meant for 1v1 engagements, or Jetpack, where there's like a specific counterplay to it in fall. Mm -hmm. Instead of it being a, hey, there's bubbles at mid, they bomb rushed, and they also be a bomb zone, we can't do anything about it. <laughs> um, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. All right, Bursty, anything you want to say? Uh, I just hope they tune down the specials in the third game. I mean, I know it's going to happen, but I wish specials are more like abilities than like ultimates yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of like abstract but like it feels like the uh, specials in this game are just so overtuned like armor literally makes your entire team uh semi-invincible globally like, i just don't think i think that's terrible game design so i really hope they tune down the specials going into splatoon 3 because you know playing smart and positioning yourself accordingly and painting the proper parts of the map is really rewarding but it can be pretty boring when the speed of the game is just lives so that you can spam this overtune special. Uh, and yeah, uh, if you haven't tried out support, I recommend people try it out. I think, I mean, I'm just guessing, but I think support's probably the least played role out of uh, the ones in competitive, so you could always use more 
support players. All right. Well, that will wrap up this finale of the weapon class discussion. You guys can find Bursty and Tic Tac either in the description or if you're on my Twitch chat, uh, they will go post their links in just a second. And thank you so much for tuning in.